Welcome back to part three of chapter one, where we're discussing the human heart. We're briefly going to discuss cardiac physiology and physiology just means the functioning of. So the, this is the functioning of the heart or how the heart functions. And we're going to be as basic as possible here. I've already mentioned briefly, you know, how blood flows through the heart and through the body. And let's talk about it again one more time. So let's start up here at the lungs. That's a good place to start. So the blood leaves the lungs with oxygen, right? In the pulmonary veins. And this is the only time that oxygenated blood will be inside of a vein. So the pulmonary veins are the only veins in the body that have oxygen. So they take oxygenated blood to the left atrium. The left atrium receives that oxygenated blood, sends it down to the left ventricle through the mitral valve. Remember, mitral valve is on the left into the aorta through the aortic valve. And then the aorta is that big giant artery that breaks down into other large arteries that eventually break down into arterioles, right? So all of these arteries take blood with oxygen out to the body to provide oxygen to cells and create aerobic metabolism through energy and all of that fun stuff. So after it gets to the body, it goes through the capillaries and then you pick up CO2 and that needs to be brought back to the heart, right? So blood that's now deoxygenated travels back to the heart through the veins. Eventually the inferior and superior vena cava put it into the right atrium. The right atrium of the heart receives that deoxygenated blood, sends it down to the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. And then the right ventricle sends that blood through the pulmonary valve, into the pulmonary trunk, into the pulmonary arteries, and then eventually right back to the lungs so they can offload the CO2 and pick up oxygen and the process can start again. Part of what makes that blood flow process work is something we call contraction, right? The cardiac cycle is when you have contraction and relaxation. Talking about this in an expert fashion, you say systole and diastole. Systole or systolic is when the heart is contracting, right? So that's going to be, well, that's your higher blood pressure, right? Because that's when the heart forces blood out. And diastole is when the heart's relaxing, when it's starting to fill back up. And so that's going to be your lower blood pressure num numbers. So if you look here and you start up here during the relaxation phase, that's called diastole. Blood is filling the heart really passively, just coming into the heart. And that's all the residual blood pressure from systole, by the way. So all the contraction caused a blood pressure that still exists during diastole. All right. So then eventually you get to this filling phase and you have atrial systole, where the atria will contract and send blood into the ventricles. That's briefly before ventricular systole to allow for optimal ventricular filling to optimize that Frank Starling mechanism that we talked about, right? Remember, the further you pull back a rubber band, the farther it will fly. The more you stretch those ventricles, the better your cardiac output will be. So atria contract, ventricles stretch and fill. And then you have ventricular systole. Now the ventricles are contracting, sending blood out through the pulmonary trunk to the lung, sending blood out through the aorta to the body through what we call ventricular systole. Okay. That's a good process, sends blood all out. And then eventually you get back to that resting phase known as diastole. 